Hi everyone, we are going to start in class number three. It's known as radio. It will require you to get two documents. If you will click File Open and find your thumb drive and go into the DGM Assets folder, you will find in class assignments. Then find the Photoshop folder and then go to in class number three. There are two documents or two images we are going to use. Please choose old radio, hold on to your control key, and choose Skywater. <clears throat> then go ahead and click open. In Photoshop you should see a document. This is known as Skywater that you see, and this is known as old radio we're going to take two images and put them together. Let's go ahead and rename this so that you can keep your original files. We'll do a file save as. Um, it's important to keep your assets organized. Notice that I've created for you a Photoshop completed folder. This is where you'll put your saved completed in-class Photoshop assignments. We'll go ahead and call this in class three underscore your first name, your last name. Then if you will change the, the format to a PSD or Photoshop, that is the native file for Photoshop, go ahead and hit save. If you notice up here on the tab, we've now changed this document to be saved as in class three. One of the first things that I'd like you to do is just change the coloring of this document. If you go up here to Image, Adjustments, U and Saturation, if you click the Colorize button, you will have the ability to change the color or hue of this ocean scene. Please choose a color that's different than the one that you see just for variety. <clears throat> and once you get the color that you like, you can increase the saturation or thickness of color and you can um, heighten the lightness or you can make it kind of look like a sunset by increasing and decreasing the lightness. Go ahead and click OK. Just looking for a variation of the color that you chose. Very simple to do. The next thing we're going to do is we're just going to pull down this tab so we can see that we want to move this radio onto our landscape. Notice that it has a white background. To change this, we'll go ahead and use what's called the magic wand. It's the fourth tool from the top. You share it with the quick selection tool, click your down arrow, and change it to magic wand. You now get what looks like a magic wand. Notice if I click in the white area, I get a quick selection of all the white. That's what's nice about this magic wand. But notice I want to isolate the radio all by itself. To do so, I go up to select, inverse. My radio is now all by itself. Now I'm going to take my radio and move it onto my ocean. To do so I must hit my move tool and then I will pick up my radio. Notice that the icon is a pair of scissors because that's what we're going to do here is grab this selection and drag it onto the ocean. Notice the little plus. This tells you you're adding a photo. We no longer need the old radio so I'm just going to close out of it. We now have the radio sitting on the horizon of this landscape. Notice that when it comes in, um, I'm just gonna reset my workspace so I can see my layers panel. It comes in, the layer is not labeled. If you'll go ahead and just rename layer one to old radio. The next thing we're gonna do is use the eraser tool just to kind of make the radio fade into the horizon. To do so, <clears throat> we'll grab our eraser tool. 
And notice with our eraser tool, we can choose a variety of paint brushes. We can even put stars or leaves or <clears throat> stems all over. To do this, I'm just going to choose this very first soft round. And I, if I take it out here, I kind of see the, the point size that I'll be using. This one's about 33. Sometimes I do about 26, something like that. And you just take the slider to that certain point size. It really is just a personal preference. And then I'm also going to lower the opacity of what it will erase. So instead of doing 100% eraser, I'm just going to do 68% of it so it's kind of see-through. Then I'm just going to kind of carefully erase the bottom of this radio so it kind of looks like it's kind of fading into the horizon. horizon. There's not a perfect, um, it's just a way for you to blend images together using your eraser tool. I'm going to go a step further and I'm going to choose stars. <clears throat> You'll notice there's a star that you can choose from. Notice if I get this star, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller so it's not quite so drastic. Lower the size of this into a 13 point. And I'm going to go to the background. I'm going to um, unlock the background by just changing it to sky water. And now I'm going to just erase some stars in the sky. So kind of clever. It's a clever way of using your eraser tool. It does erase things, but in this way we're using it as a tool to blend. So welcome to the eraser tool. Find a variety of ways to use that. The next step we're going to do is we're going to create the text for this layout. So we're going to grab our text tool and when we do so, we're going to go up here and change our color to a deep color in the ocean that matches the variation that you chose. We're also going to make this a fairly big font. Choose any font that you like that you think will look good. Probably a pretty bold font makes this very attractive. Go ahead and draw a box. The words that are going to fit in here is radio. If it doesn't quite fit in your box, remember all you have to do is grab a handle and you can fit the word in there. Draw your box and it should fit in there. <clears throat> if you don't like the font, you can select it and you can choose another font that you think might be attractive for it. Let's try something like that. Perfect. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just kind of move this down and I'm going to add a drop shadow. Select or er, layer, layer style. and drop shadow. Okay, There we go. Go ahead and click OK. <clears throat> okay, we're going to actually click on Skywater and we're going to create a new layer. If you click right here next to the garbage can, there is create new layer. We're going to name this layer Zoom and then we're just going to call it Radio. <clears throat> zoom radio. Now what we're going to do is um, we're going to stay on the zoom radio layer. We're going to click on our keyboard the control key and at the same time we're going to click right here on the capital T icon for text. If you look carefully out to your workspace radio has been selected. What we did was control click on the T. With this selected and being on the zoom layer, we're going to go up here to select, modify, and we're going to tell it to expand this selection about 8 pixels. When we do that, notice our selection goes out a little bit further, about 8 pixels. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our paint bucket and we're going to grab our paint bucket and we're going to drop color 
and preferably a dark color from our design. Really doesn't matter what color you choose because we're going to change it anyways. But notice that we have filled the zoom radio with an expanded selection. Radio is sitting on top. That's why we're able to edit that. We're done with this selection, so hold on to your control key on your keyboard and hit the letter D. That will deselect. I noticed I had a typo here, so let me fix that. Now we're on the zoom layer. We're going to do a filter. We're going to go up here to filter, noise, and we're going to add some noise. When we do that, you'll notice that it looks like confetti. I'm going to take this slider to 400 percent so I get all the colors of the rainbow with this noise. Go ahead and click OK. What we're trying to create here is a sunburst behind the words radio. There's one more filter to make that happen. You'll go to filter, blur, radial blur. You now take the slider to a hundred percent, change it to zoom, that's where we get this layer's name, and best when you click OK, you now have a sunburst behind the word radio. All right, we're going to have the chance to do that one more time. I'm going to click on radio and I'm going to create a new selection of words. We'll draw a box and this will be a smaller font because there's three words that go with it, four words, possibly 18 points should work rising to new heights <clears throat> I'm also going to go into my character window you learned about this with Idaho and I'm going to um, close up this tracking possibly to zero and then maybe just spread it out just a little bit put a little bit of space between them I think that looks a little bit better. So I like you to use all the tools that you're using. I'm going to go ahead and add layer style, drop shadow, and we're going to do that same thing again. We're going to create a zoom layer. So I'm going to drop down one layer, create a new layer because it's created above it. We're going to call this zoom rising dot dot dot. So we'll know that this is the zoom layer for rising, for making the sunburst. Once again, make sure you're on the zoom rising. Hold on to your control key on your keyboard and click the T. When you do so, you've made a selection of rising to new heights. We're going to expand this selection by clicking select, modify, expand. And probably not quite eight pixels, let's do about six. Go ahead and click OK. Notice now we've got kind of some um, an, an expanded selection. And we're going to grab our paint bucket tool. And we're going to go ahead and fill that with color. Once we have that filled with color, we're going to turn off our selection so our sunburst will go outside of that selection. Control D is what makes that happen. Then if you'll go up to filter, noise, add noise, you now have 400 percent of noise, all the colors of the rainbow. You'll do that again, filter, blur, radial blur, and make sure you're zooming it. You're doing it its best quality and you've change the amount to 100%. Go ahead and click OK. And now you can see a sunburst behind raising to, rising to new heights. You've just completed in class number three. If you'll do a file save, you will save your in class number three and then make sure you also save it as a JPEG. So you would do a file save as 
change the format down here to a JPEG so that will compress the file go ahead and hit save use the same name go ahead and click OK to get the maximum quality and you now have a PSD and a JPEG to upload to Canvas for in class number three.